Hiranyagarbha, meaning golden womb in Sanskrit, is the source of creation of our universe in Vedic philosophy, which translates to golden womb or golden egg, with a garbha in many Indian languages referring to the womb of a mother. And so in this case, the golden womb refers to the primordial cosmic egg from which the universe originated. Today's video will first cover the story of the Hiranyagarbha, which is a story of the creation of the universe as a concept mentioned in various texts such as the Vedas and the Puranas. Different texts and schools of thought have their own thoughts of the details which I'll explain. And finally, we'll also talk about how it's related to the Big Bang Theory. So as we start, please consider supporting our work by subscribing and sharing. Thank you. According to the story, before the creation of the universe, there was nothing but darkness. There was nothing at all. Then, within this primordial emptiness, the golden egg, the Hiranyagarbha, emerged. And this egg contained the seeds of creation. And there was a tremendous explosion that happened, much like the Big Bang Theory suggests. And this had a tremendous golden light, hence the name golden egg. And from this womb, this garbha, there was an infinite energy with the light of knowledge and the potential for the entire universe to be created. And this light of knowledge and sound produced is what we know today as Om. As the egg incubated, it gave birth to Brahmadev, who is known as the creator in Hinduism. Brahmaji then proceeded to create the cosmos the different worlds or lokas and different beings including us humans, the devas, asuras, animals and all other forms of life. This creation story basically symbolizes the cyclical nature of the universe and of time as well with periods of creation, preservation and destruction. So that eventually when for instance our current cycle ends, the universe will cease to exist likely at the end of the present Kalyug cycle only for the entire universe cycle to emerge once more from the Hiranyagarbha. So the story of the Hiranyagarbha illustrates the Hindu belief in the eternal cycle of creation, preservation and destruction, which in Sanskrit are known as Srishti, Sthiti and Laya respectively. So how can we compare that to the Big Bang theory we read about in our science books? The story of the Hiranyagarbha, it shares some similarities and differences as well. So let's understand them. In both narratives, there is the description of nothingness, of a primordial state where there was nothing. From the Hindu point of view in the Vedic texts, it's described as an initial darkness or sometimes as a chaos. While in the Big Bang theory, it's a state of singularity before a point of infinite density and temperature compressing together from which the bang happened. So both narratives involve a sudden event that was a catalyst that initiates the expansion of the universe. That's how it was created. One is the emergence of the golden egg, while in the Big Bang Theory, it's the sudden expansion of space-time and the release of immense energy in both as well. On one end, Brahmaji emerges from the Hiranyagarbha and then creates the universe Similarly, in the Big Bang Theory, the universe undergoes rapid expansion, then it cools down, which eventually leads to the formation of all of the galaxies, stars, planets, etc. One, however, notable difference is in the understanding of time. In the Hindu thought, time is of a cyclical nature, with the universe going through cycles, as I had mentioned, of being created destroyed. In contrast, however, the Big Bang Theory is linear. There's no end point that we know of so far. It just describes a linear evolution starting from a singular event, the Big Bang Theory, to its current state with no indication of cyclicality. So while there are similarities between the two narratives, it's very fascinating to note that scriptures that are thousands of years old found in texts contain thoughts on how our universe came to be and possibly where it was headed. And it's really, really interesting to me to think that in that time, without the modern satellites or scopes that we have today, the technology that we are able to dispose of today, they're able to even think about and in such detail describe such events. 
And I'm very seriously curious indeed to think just how our ancestors even fathomed such detailed descriptions in the text, especially when you juxtapose them to what we know about today. Now, as I had mentioned in the introduction, different texts talk about the Hiranyagarbha in a different way. The oldest reference is in the Rig Ved, specifically in the 10th mandala in the 131st slok starting from there where it is identified through a series of slokas that there is the idea of a single creator deity this is known as a prajapati and that is also known as the brahman the brahman is the ultimate reality the ultimate consciousness that is all prevailing and that is the ultimate reality the rigved mentions the separation of the hiranyagarbha into sun and sky during the creation of the world and similarly Upanishads also referred to it as the soul of the universe the Brahman which then emerges and divided into the Swarga and the Prithvi the heaven and the earth initially described also in the Vishwakarma Sukta it was later associated with Vishnu and Surya moving away from Brahmadev as the Vedic era slowly started transitioning into the Puranic era. The Matsya Puran, which is another ancient text, describes creation after a great pralaya, a dissolution, where there was darkness all around, and then Brahman, which is also referred to as Swayam Bhu, Swayam meaning self and Bhu, that self-manifested being who created itself, or nobody created it, this Swayam Bhu emerged, and this created the primordial waters and in that ocean of waters laid the seed which then formed into the Hiranyagarbha, the golden womb from which light emerged. We also have mention of the Hiranyagarbha in the Narayana Sukta and the Ishwara Upanishad, both emphasizing the omnipresence of God being everywhere, Brahman in this case, being within and outside of the universe. There is no separation, it's all a singularity. Next, we have the Vedanta Sutra, which states that Brahman is the source, sustainer, and ultimate destination of the universe, the all-prevailing, as I had mentioned. Brahman is that from which the universe starts, where it lives, where it's going to, where it's headed. It is the ultimate reality. It is everything we've thought of and what we haven't thought of. The Samkhya school, interestingly, talks about the Purusha and the Prakriti. That deserves its own video, but very briefly, in the early Vedas, Purusha was a cosmic being, not male, but a cosmic being who sacrificed by the gods created all life. The original or natural form of anything. The original or primary substance, you can say as well. And Prakriti is a manifestation under Purusha's consciousness. So the Samkhya school talks about Purusha and Prakriti as the primary principles when they're dealing with how the Hiranyagarbha was the creation of the universe. Finally, the Bhagavata school of thought describes Narayana as the Brahman, as the sole entity in the beginning who embodies the principles of creation, sustenance, and dissolution. And we know this in the Hindu thought as being the trinity, right? Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. And Narayana is depicted as a supreme Hari, who possesses multiple heads, eyes, arms, feet. He is described as the ultimate source of creation. So in this case, the Narayana is revered as the womb, as, the, as what led to the creation of the Hiranyagarbha from which all objects originate. So these were just some of the different thoughts that over the centuries, over the many, many thousands of years, different texts that talk about the similarities and their own views on what the Hiranyagarbha is. But long story short, it is described as the origin of how our universe and the worlds that we know came into existence. And sound that reverberates is what we chant as Om today, as the mantra. And so that's it for today's video, dear viewers. Thank you so much for watching. And please continue to share your thoughts and support us. And as always, stay curious. Thank you so much for watching.